Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. I met uh, a good buddy of mine, um, uh, Kurt Conklin. I ended up meeting him in, in uh, I think it was in PLDC at the time. And uh, he, had, I think it just went to RRD selection and just made it. And uh, I, I spent a little time talking to him about it. And he was kind of telling me generally what they did. And I, I really didn't know. So that's what really intrigued me. But that was as an E5. So I, I did my squad leader time. And then later on, I was thinking about, whether I wanted to go to uh, selection up at Fort Bragg or did I want to go to our D selection? And I was like, you know, I heard both of them are about the same physically. So I was trying to think, you know, if I go up there to Fort Bragg, work with those guys, um, it, it's doing the same thing that I'm doing already in the line battalion. For the most part, you know, there's those exceptional missions that they get, but those are pretty rare on a day-to-day basis. The, the Ranger platoons doing the exact same thing those guys, the Delta Force guys, were doing at the time. So I was like, ah, that doesn't seem intriguing to me. It's just another level of the same stuff. RRC or RRD at the time, I didn't really know what they did, but it seemed cool and it was different. And I said, yeah, I want to mix it up a little bit. So it was about the time I got over to be, got over there to the uh, rock to be a rip instructor. I started thinking about it. I bumped into some more of the guys and had talked to some of the guys on the teams. And I was like, man, this is what I want to do. Um, but I, I still wasn't dead set. I was actually thinking about doing the PA program or, or actually going to be a helicopter pilot. I was want, ready to change it up. Well, um, I ended up volunteering for a trip overseas, uh, running one of those special programs uh, that we, that we used to work for. And uh, while I was over there, I realized that's what the RRC, it was RRD still at the time, the RRD guys were doing. And I said, man, this is what you guys do on deployments? Man, this is awesome. And uh, the guys, uh, the team sergeant for that team told me, he said, hey, man, go to selection. Uh, If you make it, we'll take you on team three. And I said, all right. So I went back, put in my packet, uh, started PT and hardcore because I was still recovering a little bit from being wounded, not It had been a couple of years, but I'd had some knee surgeries and stuff. So I was trying to heal up, Uh, got back into premium shape. And then after about a year from that, well, probably less than that. Yeah, it was probably six or eight months after that deployment. I had my packet and went to RRC selection or RRD at the time. And then it became RRC. Uh, And then after selection and OTC, um, and that's what they called it back then. Now they call it RTC. Uh, but after that, I, w- I went straight to Team Three, so their promise stuck. So it worked worked out for me. What, 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 uh, as, oh, go ahead, well, what what can you tell us about? Because I know a hundred percent sure people are going to ask, what is the selection and training process like? Well, when I went through, um, and it, you know, they, there's certain things that nobody even gets to know about the selection unless you're the cadre working there. But um, essentially, they it's extremely professionally run. Um, and, and they, they mirrored this off of another selection process. Uh, but it, it's really solidly conducted all the cadre that you interact with absolutely go off of a script and, and what they say, I mean, it's absolutely professionally put together, well articulated, they're dressed for success in suits and ties. When they pick you up, they take you to where you go. And, uh, when you get out there where the selection, uh, course is being run at, then you start doing a bunch of administrative stuff. Psyche valves, um, IQ tests, all like tons and tons of tests. You actually sit down face to face with a psych, talk to him on several occasions. And for the entire first week, you're kind of doing like the PT test, all those basic standards, ranger standards you have to pass. Um, and then doing all those psyche valves and interviews. And then towards, towards the end of that first week, you start focusing on some land navigation. They teach you how, how to read different types of maps, um, how to make your own protractors and stuff like that that you can use, so like advanced land, navi- land navigation type stuff. Um, and then after that, we go and put it to application or put it to the to practice out in the field, doing some regular land nav courses. You know, a little picket sitting in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so that that right there busts your confidence, obviously, because it's a it's usually a regular you know standard army land nav course that hasn't been used in a while. So there's no trails leading to these pickets that are in the middle of the woods. So kind of, um, 
breaks your soul a little bit because it's it's tough out there and it's in the mountains. But then after that, you move on to like Cadre Lead Land Nav. And after I got to RRC and on the team, this is one of my most favorite things to do as a team guy is to lead this Cadre Lead because you go from one of the mountain passes up in northern Georgia to another mountain pass. And I think it's roughly about 12 miles within there. But the, the thousands of feet that you change up and down, up and down the whole way is brutal. And the first climb is up like Blood Mountain. You're going up and there's switchbacks going like this all the way to the top. And you got like eight, 75, 65 pounds, probably ruck at the time. Yeah, maybe a little less than that, 55 to 65 pounds. And it goes a little heavier uh, at the time. But these cadre that are leading it, are absolutely beasts. I mean, they're team, they're guys that are on the teams already that have already been through this. And not only that, they've been told, Hey, you're going to support selection. So, you know, it behooves them to, to beast themselves up before they show up right. that way they can break us. And, uh, and that's what they do. And, and it is the most fast paced rock march you could ever think of. And they're navigating through it as well, but kind of staying to the main trail, but, but ultimately it's a gut check to break you off. And then after that, uh, you go into the actual stress phase, which is the last little bit of it. And that one, every day you get picked up, you're walking all your points in the mountains. So you're going up over this ridge and back down the other side, back up and over this side. And walking, I'd say anywhere from 12 to 18 miles a day. Um, and, you know, and if you're not the smartest guy, maybe more. Uh, <laughs> but you got to be a stud because if you're walking more now, you gotta, you gotta cover that distance a lot faster to make the time hacks, whatever they are. Smart rangers, um, strong rangers, right? Yeah. So you do that, crank it out. And then on the last day, um, there's, I'll just leave it at that. At the, the last day of the stress week, there's a surprise. So you think you walk, you know, like 12 miles or so, and you kind of get this little pause. And then next thing you know, you're walking a lot further than you've ever walked before. And then that's ultimately, uh, I guess the administrative or the field culmination. And then we did some other things after that. And then they, they interview at a board and during that board, um, you know, it's just like a standard military or special operations board, just getting grilled by subject matter experts on different things. And me personally, when I got out of that board, I was uh, almost like broken. I, I felt that after all that I put myself through, I, I'm not getting selected. They're not selecting me. I could tell by the looks on their faces. And then when I found out that I was selected, I was, I was, my mind was blown and I was so happy to be there. And then after that, I mean, the next five, six years, five or six years that I was there uh, went by like that. It seemed like a blink of an eye and we had done so much stuff that it was all over.